first of all, I just want to start with, like most um, good sci-fi movies, I think it feels within the realms of possibility and has something to say about the, the way that we live today and the world today. And I wondered how much that was part of the draw for you in taking on the movie. Yeah, I mean, I do films because the people, I like to work with certain people. I mean, I want to make, I, I, of course, I don't, if I think the script isn't very good, I'll say no. Or if, but but um, with with Stephen now, I, I, I just like being not only with him, but with Janusz and Mitch and all the all the different people who are around him. It's a community, like a traveling circus. And if you get invited to be part of it, it's, it's, it's really fun. Um, and I know he's picking subjects that are challenging for him. He, he's very aware of the, the need to keep reinventing yourself. And because he's very particularly interested in young people and what's happening with young people, um, that, that keeps him reinventing himself. Uh, so I've forgotten what your question was now. <laughs> no, well, that, no, you, you, you've answered it. And, um, and the it, subject matter. Yeah, I, yeah the, no, when I read the book, I, yeah. when I read the book, I was excited by it and, and, um, and thought, oh my, is that where it will be in 40 years? Uh, that, that, that's, as you say, seems possible. And it's the fir third time now that you've worked with um, Steven Spielberg. How is it? I was actually this in the time? post as well, but he cut me out. He cut me out. It was just my hand. But I, I, I did appear. I was on set. And how were things um, different with the, the process this time around, say, compared to the BFG and um, Bridge of Spies, maybe, maybe the post as well, even though we didn't get to see you in that one? This was very, this was very, it was very creative. Again, a lot of fun, lots of laughs. It, it was very, um, very, very taxing for him. I thought the BFG was taxing for him, but he really only had two um, motion capture characters, myself and the leader of the Giants, that, that, he needed to, to, that he needed to have very specific, with very specific expressions and subtle expressions and things. Here he had a lot, so that when we were on the, um, what's called the volume, the motion capture stage, there'd be five or six or seven of us in different colored suits and he'd be, he, he had to look at so many screens and, um, and also he had a lot of younger actors uh, and, and so he, he, was, he was therefore, you, you know, I explaining to them more what he wanted and what he needed compared to working with say Tom Hanks or I guess I include myself now, people who know his, know how he is and know how it works and uh, he's just a person to us he, you, you know and um, who's tired some days rarely and and excited other days and overwhelmed sometimes and underwhelmed at other times and so for young people it's a it's it's a different there's a different anxiety or expectation um, so it was really challenging for him really challenging and by the end of the shoot, I remember, because we, we, we made it at the same time I was making Dunkirk, so I moved between the two productions, as I only had five days on this. And I remember coming at the end of the shoot, and they were all very, very uh, exhausted by the process. Yeah. And we get to see kind of three versions of your character, in a way, because we see the, the younger James and the, him in his latter days, and then his avatar as well. Can you, what, what was that like, getting to sort of show us three um, aspects of him in a way? Yeah. Well, it was fun. I grew up in the 70s and 80s. I, I was a teenager and then in my 20s in, the, in those decades. I didn't know much about this popular cult culture, so I had to do some studying of some films I hadn't seen to be aware of it. Um, that they weren't the films that were really on show so much in London in the early 80s and late 70s. Um, so I had to catch up with that a bit. It was quite fun to have my whole face taped back <laughs> under a wig and look in the mirror and see myself without my familiar lines and and actually think oh, I was a bit I was a bit harder when I was younger. I was a bit I was a bit more judgmental. I was I lacked um, to realize that I've become more compassionate as I've got older. I was a bit more. Um, Things were a bit more black and white than now they are. There were rights and wrongs and things like that. <clears throat> and now it's a it's a subtler. It was a, I, I was more appreciative of being in the middle between these two two characters. Kind of happy I'm not yet at the old Halliday area too. And was there any real life figure that 
helped inspire you as you were preparing to play him? Any sort of tech gurus or sort of titans of industry? <laughs> uh, a lot, lots. Um, I don't think he'll be offended if I say that um, my friend Simon McBurney of the Complicity Theatre Company in London has this kind of genius quality of Halliday. And also, interestingly, has a similar love of the real world, of, of he's a wonderful cook, Simon. Oh, to have a meal that Simon cooks is just the smell, the taste is incredible. He's also an incredible technician, and his, his theatrical productions have always employed modern, um, a lot of screens, and, and he really loves uh, technology. And, um, and like Halliday, when you're speaking to him, you, you, you see his mind, he has such incredible search engines in his mind that they're all flying off into different uh, worlds and different uh, things he, 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 he has going on in his inner life. So um, I thought of him a bit. Uh, and other pe many other people. You know, the film is really sort of filled to the brim with pop culture references, which I really enjoyed. I particularly enjoyed the Shining sequence myself, and also the music and some of the, the sound effects. Were there any uh, details in there that gave you a particular sort of thrill or made you smile? Oh, like yeah. you, The Shining, which is one of my favorite films, and um, a great book as well. But I love the fact of thinking that in the future, when you have a DVD of The Shining, as comes up in this film at one point, you don't just watch it on a screen. You, you go into the Overlook Hotel and you, you're in three dimensions with Jack Nicholson, with those characters. So if you'd never seen The Shining before, you would enter it like a, a punch drunk, if you know who I mean. There's a, a theater company in England called Punch Drunk where, uh, where you go into an actual building and experience Faust or Macbeth with the characters. I went here in New York recently and Lady Macbeth took my hand and kissed it. So you, you would have that kind of experience with these marvelous films. You know, you'd, you'd go into um, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and you'd be in the same room with Marilyn Monroe. So it's th that, that's, there are some things about the future that are very appealing and then some things that have, the film shows that are also worryingly likable, uh, uh, worryingly possible. So Mark Murray Lance, thanks very much. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you 